Hey guys, uh, here we go with part two from the packet. Now we're going to start with number 13, um, since we already did previous problems. Um, all right, number 13, the uh, question is about a cart being rolled up a hill. So it's a frictionless cart. So that's good, so we don't have to worry about friction. Um, all right, so uh, once at the top of the slope, the cart has a speed of V equals 2 meters a second as shown. What minimum speed V0 does the cart have, uh, does the cart have before ascending the slope? All right, so... Um, this is actually probably maybe more simple than it sounds, but at the end of, at the end of this situation, and when a cart is up here, right, uh, how much energy does it have? Well, we know it has a velocity of two, right? It says once, at, once at the top of the slope, it has a speed of two. So, uh, let's see how much kinetic energy it has at the top. So this is going to be K, uh, top is one half mv squared, and then that's going to be, uh, one half the mass of this cart is oh we don't know what the mass of the cart that's right uh okay actually let me go back I forgot about that part um that's okay because uh actually I don't really just I forgot I forgot that part that's okay because check it out it's still easy at the top of the at the top of the ramp top plus now okay let's think about it this way uh, got a little ahead of myself um the kinetic energy at the top of the ramp plus the gravitational potential energy at the top of the ramp, what do those have to equal? Now, at the bottom of the ramp, we don't have any potential energy, right? Okay, so at the bottom of the ramp, all energy, 100% of the energy, is kinetic. All right, but at the top of the ramp, we have kinetic and we have gravitational potential, right? So that means that at the top of the ramp, the, gra the kinetic energy plus the gravitational potential energy at the top have to equal the kinetic energy at the bottom, right? They have to equal out because we're not losing anything to thermal energy. There's no spring energy, you know, nothing else going on. So um, these two at the top have to equal this at the bottom, right? So we can go ahead and say, all right, well, the top is one half mv squared plus mgh at the top equals one half mv squared at the bottom. And look at that, just like we did in class of the day, the masses are going to all cancel each other out, right? If we divide this whole thing by m, every term has an m in it. This term has an m, this term has an m, and this term has an m. So we divide by m, they all cancel out. All right, and we're left with one half v squared um, plus gh equals one half v squared. Now, uh, we know what the velocity was at the top of the ramp, right? It was two. We know g is 10. We know the height is 15. And now we want to solve for this v. This is the, at the v the, at the at the bottom of the ramp, actually, right at the bottom. And this V was at the top. So let's plug in our numbers now and just solve. So one half at the top of the of the hill, and we had a velocity of 2. Squaring that, plus uh, 10 times 15. That's going to equal one half V squared. All right, so 2 squared is 4. Half that is 2. Plus 150 equals one half V squared. And then, uh, so we're just going to, uh, this is going to be 152 uh, uh, times 2 on both sides here. I'm going to multiply everything by 2 to cancel out this 2, right? So it's going to end up being uh, uh, 152 times 2 is 304 equals V squared. And I'm going to square up both sides to cancel the square, and we end up getting V equals, uh, punching it in, 17 point four meters per second. So there you go. So at the bottom of the hill, we had to push it at least that fast to get it going, right? If, the fast that we, if we push it faster than 17.4 at the top of the hill, it'll, it'll, it'll get to the top of the hill and then maybe go faster than two, right? But if we wanted to go two meters a second, we got to push it exactly that fast. So it's going two meters a second at the top of the hill. Uh, all right, and I'm not going to draw the graph. I want you guys to do this on your own, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, just put some labels in here. But now that you know what the numbers are, you can put the labels in and draw the appropriate graph. So there won't be any spring energy here, uh, just kinetic and gravitational potential. All right, so there's uh, number 13. Cool, let's go to the next one. That's going to be uh, number 16. All right, number 16. Uh, a card of mass uh, 10 kilograms compresses a spring a distance of 5 meters. The spring's constant is 20. 
when the spring launches the cart, what is this cart's speed? All right, this is another just conservation of energy problem, right? Except this time, instead of uh, dealing with kinetic and gravitational potential, we're dealing with kinetic and spring potential energy. All right, well, if the spring is compressed uh, five meters, uh, a spring potential energy is one half kx squared. Uh, so let me go ahead and erase that. What is eraser? Can I, is there an eraser on here? I can select objects. Whoa, that's the wrong thing to do. Oh, how do I erase things? Oh, eraser here is. Here. Let me erase this real quick. Okay, go back to pins. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so uh, that means spring energy is one half k. It told it was twenty, and it's being compressed five meters. Okay, compresses the spring five meters. That means it's from displacement is being compressed in it five meters. So let's solve for how much spring energy there is. Let's just plug in our numbers. Half times 20 times five squared. And that's 250. All right. So what's happening is uh, when the spring pushes the cart out, right, the energy is being transformed from spring energy into kinetic. That means the kinetic energy, once the spring has fully pushed the cart out, the spring energy is all converted to kinetic. So when the cart is moving, it gets that energy the spring had, right? It gets converted to the energy of the cart moving. So the kinetic energy is also 250 joules, right? So now that we know um, how much energy the how much energy the uh, cart has when it's moving, and we know the mass of the cart was 10, we can now solve for uh, v. Ah. All right, so we're just going to do uh, half times 10 is uh, 5. Divide by 5 both sides, and we're going to get uh, uh, 50 equals v squared. Square both sides. Square root of 50 is, I don't know, 7.07. 7, so let's call it 7.1. 7.1, .1, I did it again. What did I just do? I don't even know what button I'm pressing. Something on my, so the button on my pen. But I don't know which one it is. All right, anyway, there you go. So um, once that spring pushes the cart out, going 7.1 meters a second again, because all the energy in the spring is being converted into the uh, energy of motion or kinetic energy of the cart, right? Uh, it gets transformed, all right? And again, I want you to draw these graphs on your own. This time, we're not going to have gravitational potential. But we will have spring potential. Okay, that's 16. Let's go to the next one. That'll be uh, number 23. <clears throat> all right, number 23. Um, is asking us about uh, uh, the top of so now we're going to have a ball being uh, thrown off a building thrown horizontally off a building so we have our, our building right and then we have the ball thrown horizontally off the ball um, initial speed of 12 meters a second right meters a, and Microsoft just crashed for me so let's see what happens I don't know if y'all can see that or not on the screen Trying to recover my information. It's restarting. What's happening? I don't know. They're okay. This is interesting. Okay, well. Um, what number are we on? We're on uh, 23, right? All right, so that's so, okay. It looks like everything is okay. I'm just going to keep going because I don't feel like redoing every, all my... Um, Oh, okay, I'm still on. Okay, uh, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, where was I? All right, so here's our building. All right, we're at the top of a 70 meter high building. So a meter, it's 70, 70 meters uh, high, right? Uh, we have an initial velocity of 12 meters a second. Um, okay, and then um, the let's see at the, when it, it, the ball hits the ground. Right as it hits the ground, it's got a velocity of a velocity of 33 meters a second. Okay, right after it hits the ground. And the question is, of course, how much energy is lost to air friction? Ooh, okay, all right, so how much energy is lost to friction? Okay, uh, okay not really lost, right? It just becomes heat and everything, and sound, right? <clears throat> all right, well, for this uh, problem, uh, we ha again, it's a conservation of energy problem. We have our total energy in the beginning. Well, how much energy do we have in the beginning? What is it? Well, we have gravitational potential at the top, of the building, right? Plus the initial kinetic energy, right? That's how much energy we have in the beginning. And that, uh, and that at the end, we are going to have kinetic energy at the bottom of the, 
or at the you know on, on the ground or whatever, right? Um, we don't have any potential energy at the bottom, right? Because we don't have any more height. We're on the ground. So we're going to find out what this energy is, energy at the top. And we're going to find out what this energy is, energy at the bottom. And there's going to be a discrepancy, right? They're not going to be the same um, because we lost some energy. On, as the ball was going down, you know, the air is hitting it and it's making sound and it's making heat from friction. So we're going to lose some energy. So whatever the difference is between these two energies, that's how much we must have lost to friction. Okay, so let's see um, what that amount is. Well, at the top of the hill, right, we have potential because we have height, and we have an, an initial speed of 12, right? So um, let's find out what the total energy is at the top of the building. Okay, so mgh plus one-half uh, mv squared. Uh, that's the top energy at the top of the hill, right? Draw a little line here to separate this stuff out. Okay, all right, so energy at the top. M was 3 kilogram ball times 10 times 70 meter tall building plus 1 half times 3 the mass times velocity uh, was 12 squared, right? I mean, we're at the top of the building, right? The initial speed was 12 meters a second. All right, so we're just going to punch all this into our calculator and uh, see what we get. So that's 3 times 10 times 70 plus a half... A uh, half times three times twelve squared, and it can I like, turned out to get two hundred two thousand three hundred and sixteen uh, joules. All right. Um, okay. What about at the bottom of the hill? How much? How much? Uh, how much energy we have at the bottom? Well, at the bottom, energy is all we have is kinetic, so it's one half mv squared. Uh, all right. So it's going to plug in our numbers. Mass was three. Now our velocity is 33 meters a second. I want to square that. And looks like we're going to get 1,633.5 joules. All right, so there's clearly a discrepancy, right? They're not equal because we lost some energy because of friction, right? It was slowing our object down uh, or uh, you know, making sound and heat with, um, with air. So what's the difference in energy? Well, 2316. Uh, minus 1633.5, and we're going to get uh, 682.5 joules. That's how much energy we lost because of friction. All right. Okay, cool. And again, you do the graphs on your own. I'm not going to do those right now because I don't have time. All right. Uh, let's do... Actually, you know, I think I'll stop here and because I'm running out of time on my... In the video, I can only do 15 minutes. So I'm going to stop here, and uh, I'll do, I'm going to do two more. Right, I'm going to do 27 and 29 in the next video, um, but I'll stop here for this one. Um, all right, so I'll do two more here in just a second. So uh, again, make sure you're following along. If you if you don't follow, if you're not sure, not sure why I did a certain step, send me a message. You know, hey, Mr. Chandler, number 23, why would you do this, this thing you did? be happy to answer that. Um, so yeah, go ahead and uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you on Tuesday. And uh, all right, have a good weekend. Bye-bye.